We kind of got the Blake Snell experience in his Giants debut. He threw a lot of pitches in only three innings of work and wasn't at his best. It's kind of to be expected. But most importantly, the Nationals just continue to give the Giants all kinds of problems. And the Giants offense as a whole has been the worst in baseball ever since that opening series in San Diego. You are locked on Giants. Your daily San Francisco Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple passionate and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, been hosting Locked on Giants for over five years, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. So check us out there if you have not already. And please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And coming up on today's show, I'm gonna we're gonna get into the Blake Snell debut with actually Eric Engel from the Locked On Giants postcast, which I did live with him last night, but I'm going to just kind of play that for you just to introduce you to Eric Engel if you haven't met him yet. And also, that was kind of my analysis of the Blake Snell start. So once we play that, then I'm going to discuss the fact that the Nationals just keep doing this to the Giants and also the Giants offense continuing to be a problem and the bullpen. So without further delay, here's my conversation with Eric Engel, and then we'll jump into uh, the rest of this game, kind of the fact that the Nationals own the Giants for like three years now. And how do the Giants fix these deficiencies? Yo, what's up, everyone? And welcome back to the Locked On Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Engel. You may know me as the former producer from the Murph and Mac Morning Show on KMBR. And tonight, the Blake Snell debut was spoiled at the hands of the Washington Nationals as they beat the Giants 8-1 to under the lights at Oracle Park. Snell only lasted three innings and threw a ton of pitches in this one. He had some walks, but he had some strikeouts, a mixed bag in Snell's debut. Ultimately, gave up three runs, and that was more than enough for the Nats to win with the Giants' offense in the midst of a slump. And today, we are joined by the, lo- by the host of Locked On Giants, Ben Kaspik, the guy who got the channel off the ground himself, we'll get into uh, what Ben thinks about Snell's debut in just a second, but we'll break all of this down. But first, I want to thank all of you for watching us on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. Please, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thanks also for listening to us on the Locked On Giants podcast feed. However you're getting the show, we appreciate it. And make sure to check out Ben's show, Locked On Giants, The Daily Show, for more in-depth coverage. Welcome to the show, Ben. I mean, I shouldn't even, I feel like weird welcoming you on your (laughs) channel, but, you know, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad we were able to connect. I've been talking to my, you know, my listeners, but also your listeners now, (laughs) too. Yeah, so, yeah, we're like a team now, and so it's good good to get together here. Wasn't the best game, but nonetheless, good to get together. Yeah, yeah. Lots to talk about in this one. And for those of you who don't quite know the dynamic of what's going on here at Locked On, I am I am here to do the Locked On Giants postcast. I'm also doing Locked On Warriors postcasts, Locked On 49ers postcasts. So I'm here to come to you live after the game for live reaction where we can get into all the little nitty gritty pieces of the game itself tonight. On Ben's show, he generally handles bigger picture topics. Ben's really good with data analysis and things like that. So that is kind of what the difference is between our two shows, for those of you who are still unfamiliar. And, of course, tonight, let's get into it. Snell's debut, again, some ups and downs, 72 pitches, only 39 strikes, but five strikeouts. What do you think, Ben, in in, uh, in this one tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think he threw. I think he was a, in a three ball count to the first like five to seven hitters that he faced, something like yeah. that. So he could have ended up walking like six six guys in this game. So it's kind of like par for the course at times for Blake Snell. 
obviously, you know, being that it was his first outing of the year, they were they were not going to extend him once he threw, like you said, 72 pitches in three innings. 39 of those were strikes, only 54 percent. He did strike out 36 percent of the batters that he faced. So over one out of every three batters that he faced, he struck out. But he also walked. I mean, he only walked two, but it, that that was 14 percent of batter's face, but yeah, like mixed bag, you see the, the strikeout ability. He just didn't have command, um, tonight. And, and I also just, you know, to just get right to the point, I want to make the point that last year through his first nine starts of the season, this guy had a five, four, zero ERA. And then for his next and final 23 starts, 1.20 1.20 so it just goes to show you wow. it just goes to show you i mean that was nine starts at 5.40 imagine like we're, we're talking about one start today imagine eight more and if he's got a 5.4 and he ended up with a 2.25 and winning the cy young and so it's just it just goes to show you how long of a season it is and how like one start doesn't define you at all and so it Absolutely. yeah Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like we all want to, you know, react and yell and scream when the Giants, you know, don't start off the season how we want them. You know, it's offense slumping, Snell leaving something to be desired a little bit in his first start. But to your point, what the numbers we saw from him tonight, at least percentage wise, statistically matches up exactly with where he finished last season at Uh, last season. He finished with a 31.5 percent strikeout rate and a 13.3 percent walk rate. So that's pretty much right in line with those numbers. And if he can duplicate that over an extended period of game, obviously you don't want to see, you know, the three runs being duplicated in the next three innings he pitches. But I feel like he's going to settle in. Giants fans, I feel like, are really familiar with guys like this. I mean, if you remember, I know I do. Tim Lincecum always started seasons really slow. And by the end of the year was Timmy, you know. So Mm -hmm. I guess the question is, are you concerned at all about Snell at this point in the season? Not not one bit because because of what I said I mean like he like nine starts even you can be bad and end up with a he went on a historic run like the the that that final 23 starts that he had was um I think only one pitcher in the history of the game has had a better 23 start stretch and it was like Bob Gibson and um <laughs> so if you look at the numbers yeah you mentioned the strikeout rate and the walk rate lining up with the career averages but also just to kind of look at some numbers from tonight the nationals had a 429 batting average on balls in play which if you look at snell's career you know batting average on balls in play against him it's going to be pretty normal 288 right and so you're talking about taking off 150 points of batting average on balls in play and he also stranded only 40 percent of the base runners he allowed whereas in his career he strands about 80 percent of the base runners he allows and so we're just talking like one game weird stuff happens like that you're just like he's gonna allow his base runners but they're just not gonna score as often you know and tonight they did and that's just the Nationals have done this to the Giants like three oh, man, seasons in a row. Me, they, it's just games like this over and over and over with this team that's not very good, but they play their best baseball against the Giants. It's crazy, but yeah. no, no concern at all. I mean, Snell's velo was good, and the changeup looked pretty good. I mean, all his pitches looked kind of good. He just wasn't sharp. I would say. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like it's worth mentioning that he got squeezed a ton in this yes. one. There were, I mean, you, you saw the camera. If, if you guys are watching the, uh, the broadcast on NBC, you saw the camera zoom in on Blake Snell's face as he turned yeah. after he caught the ball coming back from the catcher and walking back to the mound. And he had his back to the end, but you could see him say the words five strikes, meaning he, he, he thought he had thrown five strikes and all of them were called balls. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like he was in the three Oh hole with, with the first couple batters that he faced in that second inning. And it just, uh, the wheels fell off. What a weird inning too, by the way, that whole, whole debacle, I guess you could call it. It was just really weird, man. Like, yeah, like, I, I, the, the, the pickle with the runner scoring and everything, everything just unfolded in the worst possible way for the giants in that second inning wasn't a whole lot. The giants could really do to recover at that point as this offense has just been hitting a wall lately. And uh, I mean, what more do you really want when, when from the pitching staff, you know, when, when it's Snell's first debut again, he hasn't played in a game since like last year, didn't pitch a game in this spring at all. He's thrown simulated games and things like that, but that's, that's 
you know, his, the first time we're seeing him out there on the mound, I think this is to be expected. And, and what were your kind of expectations of Snell coming into tonight? I, I thought right around 75, 80 pitches and maybe like four to five innings of work. So this kind of lines up with that, I think. Yeah, I would have hoped that he could go four or five, you know, ideally maybe maybe he could go five and be efficient, but that was that would be kind of a best case scenario. This was more, I don't want to say worst case scenario, but it certainly wasn't his best. But the fact that you're going to have this guy in the rotation behind Logan Webb every fifth day um, for 160 or whatever now, 151 games um, over the course of time, as I kind of described with those numbers, like it can really they can you know guys like this can get in a groove and then just dominate for a, you know two three months in a row and and just rack up a lot of wins so yeah it's like to me the bigger takeaway is kind of the offense like you said they just even in the series win against the Padres they were struggling to score constantly and so right now they're just they're, they're they just got nothing going offensively but um uh, I'm not I'm not concerned about Snell and 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 tonight. Yeah, they just got to build him up and hopefully next time out he's more efficient. And I would imagine he will be. Um, but even if he's not like we just saw, you can go nine starts and be kind of really bad and then still be the best pitcher in baseball when the season's yeah. over. Yeah, it's a long season. And Blake Snell's next start, if you're forecasting, should come against the Tampa Bay Rays, a team that ah. in in on the road in uh, in St. Petersburg. And, and that's the stadium he's very comfortable in. He spent the majority of his career there. He was drafted by the Rays. So a little bit of a homecoming for Blake Snell in his next start, we would assume, if everything goes according to plan between now and then. And, uh, yeah, so so a mixed bag from Snell tonight. I uh, want to thank Ben for his time today on this one. Really appreciate you. Uh, you know, you're, you're not you're not getting paid for this show. You're just hopping on and helping out. So I appreciate it, man. Uh, no, absolutely. We'll have to connect again later on this season. And, again, uh, if you guys – aren't already i mean i'm assuming you guys are all listening to the locked on giants uh regular podcast daily shows but if you aren't already for some reason make sure you check them out with ben caspic he, he does a great job breaking stuff down ben's got a ton of really great data analysis that i i think he does a great job so thanks ben really appreciate you hopping on and uh, we'll see you next time dude yeah thank you so much for having me and likewise to everyone listening who just follows me and is maybe checking you out for i mean i haven't tweeted this out or anything so maybe that that's not but i, I told people ahead of today's or on my show today that i'd be coming on tonight so maybe there's some newcomers tonight and so yeah eric does a great job right after the games breaking it down live so check that out we're a team and it's just more Giants coverage. What more could you want? Except you know, tonight tonight wasn't the best night. But yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, you Giants win. But uh, but as far as coverage go, we we we've got that we, on lock. I mean, I, I tweeted it out earlier this year. You know, Triple E plus Big Ben Caspic equals locked on stock to the moon. You know, yeah. and What more do you want? What more Absolutely. Do you want? So thanks, Ben. Really appreciate it, man. And sure. uh, we'll see you next time, dude. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, dude. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our good friends over at Game Time. I was just on the road myself uh, following the Giants to San Diego and Los Angeles. And in the past, I've traveled and seen a lot of Giants game, games in a lot of stadiums. And I have had poor buying experiences. And some of the things that I've wor had to worry about are not really knowing exactly what my view is going to look like from the seat and also not being sure I'm getting the best price. But this time, now that game time has entered my life, all of those issues were put to rest because you get panoramic views from your seat with game time. And you also get the game time guarantee, which is my personal favorite part, which means if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will simply credit you 110% of the difference. They also have things like last minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. For a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch. Terms apply, that's code F-I-R-S-T, P-I-T-C-H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. So that end date is coming up. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All 
All right, as promised, we are going to, well, I guess I didn't actually promise it. Well, I did early on. I did early on. So I hope you enjoyed Eric Engel. He does the postcast every day after the Giants play, even on weekends. Um, and so like we kind of alluded to, I think I'm recording this now the next day, but his uh, his show is like instant reaction to the games and like live. You can find it on the Locked On Bay, Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. And then it also ends up populating on this podcast feed. So check that out every after every game with Eric Engel to engage about the game right after it happens. And then for me, you know, my show is kind of analysis the next day, a little bit more in depth, less specifically focused on the game itself. So with that said, also you can find every pitch of the Giants hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search the word Giants. So getting into the 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 problems here. I mean the Giants have not had a good start to this season when you just look at the overall record and the fact that basically, I mean, we're kind of going to combine these two things, but the Giants offense, I looked, you know, I wanted to see, okay, because I was talking about how they were fine offensively after that series in San Diego, um, but that the pitching was the problem. But lately the hitting has been a problem and, in the San Diego, in the most recent San Diego series, the pitching was pretty solid, um, but offensively, the Giants are dead last with a 59 weighted runs created plus since um, that the beginning of that series in LA. So we are talking about a very small sample. It is seven baseball games, but why you got to be dead last? I mean, come on. There's just something about um, that happening. When you also take into account how poorly they hit in the second half of last season. And so the last thing that you want to see is any kind of extended period where this same team goes out and just really is towards the very bottom uh, offensively. There's no reason when I look at some of the names in this lineup, they're not the worst offensive team in baseball. Are they the best? No. Are they the worst? Definitely not. Um, are they good enough, especially with that starting rotation, um, to be a playoff team? Yes, but not if they play like this, because I mean, over the last seven games, they've hit 192 with a 263 on base and 290 slugging. So all of those numbers are abysmal and it adds up to being the worst offensive team in baseball over the last seven games. And so, yes, seven games, tiny sample. I think, you know, yesterday I was talking about winning this series and uh, maybe sweeping. So obviously sweeping this series is off the table. But at this point, you know, you still have an opportunity to go out there and try to win a game tonight. And then if you are able to try to win another game and then you can like if they come away winning this series anyway, then all is forgotten that you lost this opening game, Um, you know, so. That's why you just take it one day at a time in baseball and things would be very things could look very, very different if they end up taking two out of three in this series. But the Nationals have had the Giants number and I'm not just talking about last year, even in 2022 as well. This Nationals team, I decided to kind of dig into this a little bit and they against the Giants have just been so much better than they've been overall against the rest of the league. So against the Giants since 2022, so counting 2022, so two full seasons, 22, 23, and one game in 2024, the Nationals have hit exactly 300 against the Giants, whereas against everybody else, their batting average is 248, not counting the Giants. And their on-base percentage against the Giants is 356, Against everybody else, not counting the Giants, 310. Their slugging percentage against the Giants, 438. Against everybody else, 384. So where this is coming from, largely, is we can look at batting average on balls in play. And that's what I see with my eyes. Like, And we discussed that in the Snell segment, is that they put up a big batting average on balls in play number against Snell, and that's really where the damage came from. I mean, he also is falling behind in counts for sure, but... 
they also whatever it was like 429 or something average on balls in play the nationals against everybody but the giants since 2022 so that's the vast majority of their games have a 291 batting average on balls in play since 2022 that's a pretty normal number and this is kind of a luck slash sustainability number um well, it's 61 points higher against the Giants. They have a 352 batting average on balls in play against the Giants since 2022. Their strikeout rate is about two, exactly two points lower against the Giants. So that's not hugely different, but it is. They strike out less against the Giants than they do against the rest of the league. Giants are not a huge strikeout team, so that could just be kind of a normal thing. The biggest thing that jumps off the page is just 60 extra points of batting average on balls in play against the Giants versus everybody else. And it's like close to a 600 plate. They've had almost 600 plate appearances against the Giants since 2022. Something in along those lines. Does that sound right? Uh, I'd have to double check, but I believe it's over 500 at least. So it's not like we're talking one game here. I'm talking two full seasons plus a game. And so overall, the Nationals have a 120 weighted runs created plus against the Giants, which is 20% better than league average offense. Um, and this is a team you might be like, oh, well, okay, they're they're a good offensive team. They're not. You know, <laughs> you look at what have they done against the rest of the league? They've been 9% below average against everybody else over the last two years plus a handful of games this year. So 30 percentage points better against the Giants than against everybody else is has is this Nationals offense. And so it's just kind of befuddling and confounding and, and it's like I just can't really explain it. The Nationals just continue to do have this exact kind of game where they just put up a million hits, tons of contact, and I have no explanation for it. I, I think it's just an anomaly. I think it's just a weird thing that has happened. And, you know, going out there tonight, Kyle Harrison, for all we know, he could throw a bunch of zeros up there and keep the Nationals to like two, three hits in the game. So that's, I would kind of expect regression to the mean here where the nationals just revert back to being the nationals they can't just there's no like magic pixie dust that allows them especially because the players change it's not like the giants have had the same roster every year um they've had a lot of different pitchers like uh you know yesterday they had never faced blake snell as a giant and yet they did the same thing to blake snell and they had never faced kai Wei tang who pitched several innings like Eric Miller pitched like I don't know if they had ever faced any of these guys um I think that was it right Snell Miller and Tang they had never faced any of those guys as giants so it doesn't make there's no explanation here that is rational that you can say oh they just like hit well against the giants I mean they do they have but that doesn't mean there's sustainability to it or there's any kind of magic formula to it I think it's just happened and so anyway for the Giants it stinks because you got a team that comes into town and uh, you should be beating and they keep beating you and last year um, they did poorly against some bad teams including the Nationals and it hurt them and so this is just one game so we're not going to overreact like I said you've got two more coming up and if you take care of business, things look a lot different. They'd just be, if they can win the next two, they'd just be one game under 500 and you move on. So anyway, coming up in just a minute, we are going to look at the deficiencies for the Giants. Focus less on the Nationals themselves. Look at the Giants. Look inward uh, to what's going on with the Giants that's behind what is a four and seven underwhelming start. And like I said, the Giants being the worst offense in the league over the last seven games. So we'll get into it in just a minute. And before we do. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Prize Picks. That's right. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy fantasy sports app 
with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. My favorite thing about prize picks is that you can get in on the action in more than 30 states, including, yes, that's right, the great state of California. Also, prize picks now offers Apple Pay for a quick and easy way to deposit into your account this baseball season. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app today, use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less, it's that easy. All right, as promised, we are going to look inwards at the Giants. Take some inventory of what they're doing to themselves like what's going on and to me it continues well yeah I mean you could kind of say their pitching and their hitting has not been very good and you know especially some of these guys in the bullpen but also you know like Logan well I guess Logan Webb had a good has had two good starts and one not so good start Jordan Hicks has been great like he's probably the best uh, story of the season so far. Michael Conforto had to sit yesterday with a side soreness, but Bob Melvin, manager Bob Melvin, did say that he expects Conforto to be back in the lineup tonight. And so hopefully that's true. But, you know, like I said, the Giants overall have been the worst offensive team in the major leagues since they started that series in Los Angeles. And their batting average on balls in play is 232. I just mentioned the Nationals against the Giants have put up a 350 batting average on balls in play over um, two plus seasons of playing. And so for the Giants, that's the third worst mark in baseball. Um, again, tiny sample of seven games, but nonetheless. And then 098 isolated power is second last. And so what, what troubles me about this is that we saw some of this last year for extended periods. And I get it. We're, these are different players. Like we're talking about some of the, we're talking about Jorge Soler and Matt Chapman and um, Jung Hoo Lee, right? We're talking about a lot of different players, but I do not like to see this. Like I want to see a little bit more consistency. I don't want to see that like... Even when you're having your bad spells, be mediocre, you know, or a little bit worse than mediocre, but don't be the worst, right? And that's what they've been for a week, and it's just hard to watch. Um, and so, and you're facing the Nationals, who are not a good p a team at all, like in general, pitching or hitting. So the Nationals, I mean, they, they entered this series with... I don't know. They have a team ERA of 508 after last night when they basically shut down the Giants. Giants have a team ERA of 546. They, you know, when I look, Jordan Hicks has been good. Logan Webb's ERA is up around five, which is going to come down. Ryan Walker has been like the one really good and consistent reliever so far. Um, Keaton wins ERA is up around six, but the peripheral numbers are better. Uh, there's just not, I mean, Landon Roop, he, he, oh, he pitched last night too. Um, and so the Nationals hadn't seen him before either. He's a rookie and he gave up his first runs. He did give up a home run to this Lane Thomas character who the Giants just can't get out for three years or whatever it's been. So, I don't know. The pitching hasn't been great. Like I said, their team ERA is 546. They're, you know, if I break it down by starters and relievers, it's not going to look good either way. They're starting pitching um, 501 ERA, which ranks uh, 22nd in baseball. And if you look at their reliever ERA, it is... 610 which is 27th in baseball so they're not preventing runs and they're not scoring runs and so that is just obviously 
maybe in a way you feel kind of fortunate to be only four and seven when I start talking about some of these numbers. So forgetting like, I, you know, not counting the first four games in San Diego is kind of dumb. I'm, um, you know, it like those games happened and they count. So the last seven versus counting all 11 isn't any more indicative of, it, of anything. But still on the season, we are talking about a Giants team that ranks, uh, where do they rank? They rank 24th with a 82 weighted runs created plus. So their average on balls in play, which is kind of the biggest thing going on here, ranks 23rd and it's at 260 and league average is around 290 and so you should expect that that number is going to creep closer to 290 um, but for now it hasn't been and that's been a big factor behind um, why they've struggled so when they've put the ball in play basically we should expect more hits on balls in play than we've seen um, something of a positive is that their strikeout rate is not super high. It's only 22%, which is, uh, the, you know, the worst I'm from worst to best they're 18th. So, so number 30 would be the best. So let me do that in reverse. The lowest strikeout rate belongs to the D backs and the giants have the 13th lowest. So they're in the better of the top half. Isolated power for the Giants offense, which is slugging minus batting average. They rank 20th, so they haven't hit for a lot of power. Walk percentage, they rank 17th. So there's just nothing in particular that stands out in a positive way so far about uh, the Giants offensively. Their base running has been not very good. They rank 21st in this Fangraph's base running metric. We've seen we've seen it. Michael Conforto getting froggy on the bases a couple times. Jung Hu Lee getting picked off, um, and defensively, according to this metric by Fangraphs, they've been kind of in the middle. And so, anyway, it's still very, very, very early. But you got to take advantage of teams like this with the Nationals, and so you can't be doing what they did last year, which was getting smacked around by this team and that's what happened yesterday but you got to turn the page and write the ship tonight and get back on track so that's my analysis of that and that is all the time we have for today thanks again for making locked on giants your first listen every day every day is tomorrow breaking down game two and hopefully the giants getting back on track kyle harrison gonna be on the mound for the giants you don't really know what you're gonna get with him that's kind of what we've said about um having a rookie He could go out there and completely dominate, or he could go out there and struggle. But he's kind of held his own against some tough opponents. Josiah Gray going for the Nationals. This is a guy who has struggled. Had a good season last year, but overall in his career um, has struggled and gives up a lot of homers. And so hopefully the Giants can just kind of get to this guy and they can get on track offensively. So we, we shall see. Anyway, once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thank you so much again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.